Hi guys, my name is Marnie Craycroft. I'm the founder and the editor and the writer of Carrots Are Orange. It's a Montessori living and learning blog. CarrotsOrange.com is the URL. Definitely head on over there and check out the blog. I've got loads of stuff on parenting ideas, loads of learning activities, and so on. And um, the basis of my blog is Montessori because I am Montessori trained. I believe wholeheartedly in Montessori. It's a lifestyle. It's not a philosophy that ends and begins at the, the classroom door. And today, we're going to be talking about Montessori practical life. For those of you who uh, listened in the other day, I talked big picture Montessori practical life when it comes to the philosophy in general, why it's the first area of the classroom, what are the aims, what are the direct aims, and I went over the four main areas of practical life. Well, today, we get to dive a little bit or a lot deeper into the Montessori practical life lessons. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, and as I mentioned, we're just going to begin with basic exercises, which is uh, one of the four main areas in the Montessori classroom. So I'm going to turn down the classical music a little bit. Alexa, lower the volume. Okay, that's my Alexa. Do you guys know Alexa? She's the Amazon Echo. Oh my goodness. She's... It's a life changer for me. Um, anyway, so we will start. Um, I have a lot of things to cover here. Um, and as I mentioned the other day, one of the greatest things about Montessori Practical Life activities is that you have a framework of all the lessons, but within that framework, you're, giving, you're given a ton of, of creative license, if you will. So you can... Uh, go nuts with your variations, right? Depending on what that particular child is interested in or uh, what time of year it is, right? So do a hand transfer with acorns, right? At the beginning of the year or during a botany unit where you can talk about the oak tree, for example. So in the Montessori classroom, everything kind of weaves together in that way. And it really, it was really, really effective for kids. So, um... With that, I'm going to start with the basic exercises. I do have some, I have some notes here, so if you see me kind of looking down or whatever, it's just because I don't want to miss anything. Um, I don't want to miss anything for you guys. Um, and I will say, I'm not going to go over the um, basic procedure lessons, which is like carrying the chair and walking on the rug, around the rug and that sort of thing. We will cover that in a later live, so definitely keep your eyes and ears open for that announcement. And also, I'm not going to um, present every lesson from absolute the beginning. So I'm going to do that just once for you guys. And then you guys can just assume that the child and I are sitting at the table, child sitting to my left, and I'm giving the lesson. So for example, when you are ready to give your child a lesson, you can say something like, come on, I want to show you something. Or, I'm going to introduce something new to you today. Would you like to try? Something that gets them excited and, um, you know, it, it, it makes them feel a little special, I guess. Come on, we're going to go do this together. And um, so that's really how every lesson will start. And then the trays live on the shelves, right? And there's a very specific way that the trays are presented on the shelf in a Montessori early childhood classroom particularly when it comes to practical life, okay? And I write about that on my blog. I can source the link for you guys so you can read a bit more about it, but it, there is a sequence to these practical life trays, beginning with the basic exercises here that we're gonna talk about. So you um, ask the child, or you, you can either ask the child, direct the child to the shelf and ask them to bring the tray over to you, or you can walk over to the shelf and point to the tray and ask for the child to pick it up. The proper way to pick up the shelf, and I do have, or the shelf, the tray, um, and I do have a tray here, but I'm a bit too close for you guys to see it. Let's see. So you want to pick it up gently and slowly on both sides and really encourage the child um, to move gently and to move softly and 
to move slowly, right? This is all getting into um, those aims of coordination and those aims of concentration. And I know self-regulation is particularly difficult uh, in the early childhood classroom. Um, I know I have three boys, so I can totally relate to that. So reminding them to walk slowly and to move their bodies with some intention it's really helpful. The great thing about these trays, guys, is that if they're moving too fast, if they bump into something or whatever, what's going to happen? There is an, a control of error built into every single one of these works. So what's going to happen is that, you know, the, the tray is going to gonna knock the beans out of the bowl, for example, or if, if it's a water work, they're going to spill the water. So that's direct feedback for the child without you having to be like, hey, be careful. You don't want to spill the beans. Ha ha ha. Um, but again, remind them in the initial lesson, like, hey, you know, or, or, or encourage them. Great job carrying that tray. I noticed all the pasta stayed in that bowl. You, you really worked hard carrying that tray. You, you walked very slowly. So just something like that, just to give a little positive reinforcement to the actual carrying of the tray. So, um, so yeah, pull out the chair. You guys sit down together. As I mentioned, um, the child sits on the left just because of the way uh, the dominant hand typically works. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the camera onto the tray. And what I noticed when I was kind of testing things earlier is that it kind of flipped the tray around. So just keep in mind, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Just keep in mind um, that you want to start, you always want to move left to right, okay? And that is all about preliminary reading and writing, right? That's getting the mind um, kind of trained to do that. Ah, such a fascinating stuff. Anyway, um, so you always want to have that bowl that's filled with water, beans, etc. on the left-hand side and move to the right. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. Bear with me in here as we adjust. Oops. Oh my gosh, I just showed you guys the insanity that is my playroom right now. This is actually technically my Montessori room, and there's all sorts of awesome Montessori materials. But we had an enormous play date yesterday with, I'm not kidding you, eight boys. So there you have it. That's a little uh, behind the scenes for me. So, um, hmm, okay. Let's see if I can do this like this. Yeah, we'll, we'll go like this. Um, okay, and I'm going to turn down the music a little bit to give you guys, um, for those of you that are watching, can you let me know if, if you have a decent view of the tray? And I will certainly work on uh, making this a bit better presentation for you all. These are all my materials. Okay. And by the way, if you guys have questions as I'm giving these lessons, please, please, please comment and ask me that question. I will stop when it makes sense and I will address the question, okay? So as I mentioned, we're working, so for those of you who just joined, this is Marnie. I am the founder of Carrots or Orange, Montessori Living and Learning blog. And today I'm sharing one area of the practical life sequence, which is basic exercises. So we're gonna begin with the very first lesson that a child will get in that area, and it's called transfer of dry goods. And so as I mentioned, we're here, we're sitting at the table, the child's at, at our left, and we begin. Today I'm going to introduce you to transferring of dry goods. Now the child may or may not even care, that's kind of funky language, so however you want to kind of introduce it. Today we're going to work with our hands or, you know, anything like that. Um, and then you trace the bowl slowly. Say so this is a dish. This one is full. 
and this dish is empty. So you see how I did that. Um, I'm going to turn down the music a bit more. Alexa, turn down the volume, please. Okay. This is a dish. This is a dish. This dish is full. This dish is empty. I am going to take the pasta from the full dish to the empty dish. Move very slowly here. Use your dominant hand and transfer the pasta or the beans or the buttons or whatever you choose into the empty dish. And as you're doing this, the child's interest is really going to be it will depending on the child, right? So <laughs> some children, like my five-year-old, would be very concerned that there were some pasta still in this bowl. So that's where you have to really pay attention to the child. But a lot of kids really enjoy the touch and the feel of the object, and they enjoy hearing the sound of the object going into the bowl. It's kind of a nice sound. So you can point that out. Do you hear that? It's kind of a nice sound, isn't it? And so then you can move, I'm going to move the pasta from this bowl into the empty bowl now. And for me, guys, I am a pretty intense person, as some of you may have noticed. So I have to really work on being intentionally slower, intentionally uh, quieter. So I'm using a softer voice. So now I'm going to go through that again. This, for those of you who are just joining, is the very first lesson within Practical Life Basic Exercises. So now I'm going to go through the lesson and I'm not going to interrupt myself. So you know, <laughs> interrupt myself. So you know uh, the lesson from start to finish. So the scene is you're sitting at a table, the child is to the left, you have the tray in front of you, and here we go. This is a dish. This is a dish. This dish is full. This dish is empty. I'm going to take the pasta from the full dish to the empty dish. Kind of a nice sound, isn't it? Oops! One fell onto the tray. That's okay. Now this side is empty. And this side is full. Would you like a turn? So that's it, guys. And a couple things I want to point out about this exercise. I have two identical bowls. So here's where you can get really, really fun. And if you go on a trip and you find some really cool uh, bowls, you know, and somewhere in South America, right? That's gonna add a lot of character and a lot of interest to your tray. The other thing I wanna point out is that here I use some really funky, cool pasta. And that's a point of interest for the child, right? They're gonna be kind of interested in that. It's raw pasta. Pasta is obviously a great thing to work with um, when you're, um, working with kids on this, but there are so many different things you can fill these bowls with. For example, you can use gems. See these gems? So these gems, I think I just got them maybe even at a pet store or something like that, but they make a really, really great noise. 
And these are clear, but you can get really creative and get all sorts of different colors. And you can even integrate a sorting work in here to do a little presensorial work. Um, you can go uh, nature. So I have these little wood chips that I cut up. So that's a really fun thing. And what a great little uh, texture. This is um, for the child, again, presensorial, right? You're not introducing that necessarily, but it's something that their brain is registering. So that's kind of a fun one. You could use rocks. Um, they have shells here. So that's kind of a fun thing for kids to get their hands on. This is something I like to do around Valentine's Day, these little roses. So again, this can be a hand transfer, but you can also do tweezers and tongs and things like that. And obviously, I have pom-poms. So you can go crazy with pom-poms, big, small. Uh, you can use them for dry, hand transfer, dry pouring, tweezers, etc. So there's so many options. Just go into your kitchen and find some beans of all different sizes and types and beads and buttons, etc. So there's so many options. And that's one thing that I truly love about practical life is the ability to really integrate a little bit about who you are into the classroom, as well as really pay attention to that child, whether you're homeschooling or, or, or not, or whether you're in the classroom, really observing them and understanding what it is that piques that child's interest. What What is that hook that piques that child's interest? Um, and it, you know, it ranges from child to child. Um, you know, if the child's into Legos, maybe you want to like, this is a dangerous thing, but bring in like some a little bro bricks, right? Like talk about an exercise of self-regulation. Like you can hand transfer these, but you can't build with them. Um, uh, that's not the point of the lesson. If you want to build, let's, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's just a little side note. So that was the first lesson in the basic exercise area of practical life within the early childhood Montessori classroom. Very first lesson. The second lesson that we're going to go over is um, the introduction to uh, sponging, which is so much fun, right? Kids love sponging. I'm not sure about adults so much, but again, we're going to just... Bring the tray over, but again, you start with, oh, let's do something new and fun and exciting today, and you get the child interested. So I will bring over um, a mat, okay? So you want a mat, uh, a sponge, two dishes, and one is filled with a little bit of water. A great thing to include here, which I don't have right now, is... Uh, for the child to put an apron on in case they get wet. Just kind of a good little thing to add into that work cycle. So I'm gonna go grab my, I'm gonna grab my wet sponging. Okay, so here's my my mat, and that's what we're talking about with a mat. Um, having a mat really, it protects the table, and it just makes for uh, easier, Clean up, for example. So you can use, I'm just using a placemat here, but there's um, art mats that you can use that are really great. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys. So here are my two bowls. Again, you can go crazy, be nuts, be, these are not that interesting. I just, <laughs> I know that, I admit that, but they do the trick. Um, sometimes kids don't care, but if you really have to hook a kid, then find a really cool, interesting set of, Bowls, preferably glass, to do this. Uh, to do this work, okay. So again, child sitting on the left, and you. What you want to do first is identify the materials. So you have a. This bowl has. Here, this is a bowl. This is a bowl. This bowl has water. The water is blue. This bowl is empty. And you say sponge. And then an interesting part to this, you can let the child feel it. Right? Which kids, like, do you want to feel it? Again, I will go over this whole lesson without interruption in just a moment. And so, um, what you, you want to point out the dryness of the sponge, too. I didn't mention that. Um, okay, so since I'm doing a sponging work, I'm just going to start in here um, because then once I do this, the sponge won't be dry, right? <laughs> so, here we go. 
this is a dish. And this is a dish. This dish has water in it. The water is blue. This dish is empty. This is a sponge. The sponge is dry. Would you like to feel it? I'm going to move the water from this bowl to the empty bowl. Do you think I can? I'm going to use just the sponge and my fingers. This is a cool part because you notice the absorption. The children really like this. It's great pre-science. You do not want to wring the sponge. So exaggerate shaking. Slowly move over and squeeze. Another cool thing that kids like about this exercise is not only the absorption, but how the sponge goes from dry to wet and how the sponge gets heavier, goes from lighter to heavier. So you can ask if they would like to feel it. It's heavier, isn't it? If there are any spills, you can encourage the child to pick up and really exaggerate like, oh, did we get it all? Okay, this bowl's empty and this bowl is full. And then you repeat it, moving the water from this side to this side with the sponge. Um, I'm going to stop for a second here because I have a question here. Anjali, hi Anjali. She asks, is there a way to access this video later? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, just go back onto my Facebook page and I'm also uploading all of these to YouTube. Um, so you can just search on my Facebook page or I'll send out the link to um, uh, my YouTube upload as well. So thank you, Anjani, for joining. I know it's crazy. I'm trying to figure out the right time of day to do this. So if you guys have better times of the day, please let me know. Uh, I would really appreciate that feedback. Okay, guys, so what we did so far is, for those of you who are just joining, we're covering Montessori Practical Life, the basic exercises within the early childhood classroom. So Practical Life has four main areas. Basic exercises is the first area that we focus on. So, so far, what we've done is we've done the transfer of dry goods, and we just did our second lesson, which is the introduction of, to sponging. Okay, so there is a sequence, and we got to stick to it. The next, um, the next lesson is um, pouring dry goods. Okay, so I'm going to get my tray again. Pouring dry goods. There's my tray, and again you have. Um, Oops, sorry guys, it's looking at the wrong page. Okay, so, oops, sorry, I just knocked over something. Um, so ideally you have two uh, glass pitchers or, um, uh, you know, you could even use like a creamer. Uh, truth be told, I had difficulty finding my pitchers this morning. I used to have two creamer, like porcelain pitchers and two glass pitchers. I don't know where they are at all. So I'm kind of improvising here. And again, it, that's okay. It's all about the framework. You'll get the basic lesson and then you can have liberty to, um, to get creative around that. By the way, I do want to let you guys know, you don't have to purchase all of this stuff retail. I get most of my practical life materials from consignment stores. 
Um, here in the U.S., it's uh, Goodwill is a big one. And I live in the Seattle area, and Seattle has an amazing Goodwill in the International District. It's out of control. You can get gorgeous, gorgeous things for practical life. Like, seriously, it will leave you drooling um, for ridiculously cheap, which is great, too, because if there are breakages, you know, if there are, you know, what happens, we all have accidents, it doesn't kind of hit you in the gut as much because it was a 50 cent dish or something like that. So that's a little side uh, pro tip for you. So we're going to be doing pouring dry goods. So as I mentioned, you ideally have two clear pitchers. One has a half to three fourths filled with a dry good. So you could use beans, you can use buttons. Um, again, get creative. So let's see, what did I grab? Oh, I know what I did. This is cool. I did, um, so I'm just using two clear glasses. And again, clear is good because it's a point of interest for the uh, child. Um, and again, don't be afraid to use glass. In fact, I got these from Montessori Services. They're awesome little tumblers. Um, kids love them. But the what I'm using for my dry good is actually these little, you see these little wooden discs? Um, they're awesome. They're light. Um, they come in all sorts of different colors. Uh, so you can, again, get creative uh, depending on the time of year and the season. So it's kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to move this. Before I stop, let's see, Catherine. Oh, Catherine says, thank you for sharing your knowledge. It's very appreciated. You are awesome. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, it's my pleasure. I, I get, I obviously love Montessori and being able to spread the Montessori love is huge. So um, thank you for that. Okay, so here is my tray. Pouring dry goods. Okay, so again, we've gone to the, we've gotten them excited about doing a new work. We've gone to the shelf. We've carried the tray gently over to a table. We're sitting at the table. The child is to our left. Okay. So, again, introduce the materials. This is a cup, or this is a glass. This is a glass. This glass has beads in it or discs, or whatever you want to say. And I only filled this a bit, but you could fill it up a lot more than that, halfway, but. So this is a glass, this is a glass. This glass has wooden discs in it. This glass is empty. I'm going to pour the wooden discs from this glass into the empty glass. So moving very slowly and intentionally, show the child how to tip slowly. And again, you can get really, really close. Here, guys. Hi! Where you can get really, really close and say, oh, isn't that a And then you repeat. Oh, I want to make sure I get every single wooden disc out of this glass. Oh, okay. Then you move your your body and just make sure, just really exaggerate. Like, oh, did I get, I just want to make sure I got all the rice. All right, did I get every button? And, you know, get the child uh, curious and interested in affirming that. And then you can ask the child if he would like to do the exercise. You can say something like, would you like a turn? Would you like to try? And if the child says no, that's fine. Hey, it's up to them. They can, and then you ask, will you please return the tray to the shelf? So, um, if the answer is yes, obviously you get up and you allow the child to work. Um, and again, control of error on this is if you spill any uh, on the tray or on the floor, the, 
the sounds of the grain falling. I keep saying grain because usually I use rice, but the sound of the dry good falling on the floor or falling on the tray is also a control of error, which is kind of neat. So you, you have the visual, you see it, but also the sound. And then, um, you know, as I mentioned, the sound is an interesting thing to the child. And also the object is going to be pretty interesting to the child, too. So that was pouring dry goods, okay, guys? Um, and that was the third lesson within Montessori Practical Life Basic Exercises. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second and read some comments here. Okay, Jennifer. Jennifer asks, what are the best references for homeschooling Montessori method? Great question. And thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, Jennifer, I have tons to share on that um, on my blog. And you can either go and search on the blog, but I have a ton of kind of starter books, like Montessori books for parents, Montessori books for uh, even from like birth on, like even if you've just had a child, but you're kind of interested in the way Montessori approaches brain development, etc. So I have a couple of book lists there, um, but I also have loads of references when it comes to getting materials, and you know, no one's going to argue with me here. Montessori is not an inexpensive endeavor, but there are do-it-yourselves, and there are more inexpensive ways to access the materials. So I can't emphasize enough, you guys, and that is why I'm doing this. Montessori, again, it's the lifestyle. That's my huge, huge thing, right? But the second main thing is you got to know the lesson. So some people are doing the Montessori thing at home um, and they get the, they grasp the, the philosophy, etc. cetera, but um, they don't take the time to learn the lessons, which is why I'm doing this because the lessons are huge. There's a very specific approach to doing it, very specific di di direct aims and indirect aims. So I hope you guys appreciate that. Uh, Jennifer asks, do I have to get the albums? No, <laughs> I, I, that's kind of where I'm, I'm hoping to interject myself and help you guys. Um, when I did my training, everyone is required to have their own album. And I think that's huge because you go through the lessons, right? You've got your hands on the materials. Um, but if I can help you in that way, um, Again, these videos are great because I can kind of, and don't take this the wrong way, guys, I can kind of handhold you, right? So if you have questions, you can ask right here about the lesson. And this video is also saved, and I can embed it on my blog and in YouTube. So we can really create a safe environment there because if you want to do Montessori at home, it's important that you do it, do it correctly, um, at least in some, you know, with the framework. And... Um, I think when you purchase the albums and you don't go through the training with a cohort, with a group of peers, you don't quite get that feedback. So that's kind of where I'm hoping to interject myself. And top secret to you all right now is um, I'm actually developing an online course for those of you who want to integrate Montessori into your home as it specifically re relates to the areas of the classroom. So that is going to be... a a heck of a lot cheaper for you than buying the albums. But there's books also out there that outline terrific exercises and activities, um, not necessarily specifically in the order of sequence that uh, Montessori in, in like her original albums uh, has the lessons, nor will you, or you will see variations that are awesome. But I think your first step is to learn the basics and then you can move um, with your own creative license on that. I hope that makes sense and answers your question. That was kind of long-winded. Um, okay, so we have done three lessons so far, and I have a few more to do. So I'm going to kind of race through here. Um, we did uh, transfer of dry goods, introduction to sponging, pouring dry goods. Now we're going to do wet pouring. Okay, you guys psyched for this? Kids love wet pouring. Um, and again, I took a little liberty here with the wet pouring because of my whole pitcher situation. <laughs> but 
I will grab the mat again. Okay. Uh, where's my wet pouring? Oh, here it is. Okay. So, I have water. And it's fun to add color to this water, as I did with the sponging, but... Oh, it is. So you have a pitcher and a bowl. This is this is how I'm doing it. But you could have two pitchers. You could have, you know, <laughs> do whatever you want. You know, just again get the basic lesson down, and then um, then make it happen. And you do want a sponge too. So I'll just kind of recycle the one I just used. Um, I just have a bunch of these sponges. I forget, they're like pop-up sponges. I feel like maybe I got them at Trader Joe's or something like that, but they're awesome. They're super easy to cut. And um, what I do is they come dry and flat. And so I basically just cut them like that and it makes for perfect, this is actually a bit too big. Um, I would actually cut it again, so a fourth. Um, you forget how little the fingers are. So that's my little pro tip for you. Okay, so here we go. This is wet pouring. So you go to the shelf, remove the tray, walk carefully to a table. This is a pitcher. It has water in it. This is a bowl. It's empty. This is a sponge. It's dry. Would you like to feel it? So you want to be very deliberate here, and I kind of did things a bit backwards. Um, I mean, not in a bad way, but um, you identify the picture that is empty. I wonder if I have. So, okay, here, guys, I'll do this. Um, <laughs> this is. Okay, so I have a huge picture here and a small picture. Ideally, you have the same exact picture in each, okay? So you would have two of these, ideally, or two little creamers, okay? So let's just pretend, okay? Thanks for bearing with me here. You'd say, this picture is empty. Or, this is a picture. It is empty. And then you would do the sponge thing. And then you would say, this is a picture. It has water in it. So you'd say, this is a pitcher. It is empty. Do the sponge. This is a pitcher. It is full. You'd be very deliberate with how you pick up the pitcher. Lift the pitcher carefully with right hand fingers grasping the handles, okay? And the index and third fingers of the left hand supporting the spout, okay? So you want to be very deliberate and intentional. And I know it seems kind of crazy, you guys, but trust me, kids are, they're watching and it just really helps them with the control of movement. Obviously, it's not super natural, but you know, if, if a kid were to just do this the first time, they'd be like, ah! so you want to just show them how you grasp that handle and you support the spout of the pitcher and then you pour. That makes a cool sound, doesn't it? And then you can reverse. Okay. There you have it. So, um, again, you use the sponge to, you use the sponge to pick up any, any wet on the tray. And then you ask the child if he would like a turn if not, that's fine. He can return the tray to the shelf. If so, you stand up and you leave. Voila. Okay, so that was wet pouring, our fourth lesson. Yay! Transfer of dry goods, introduction to sponging, pouring dry goods, wet pouring. Now we're going to do spooning. Woohoo!
I know you guys are totally pumped, aren't you? You're totally pumped. I know it. Just admit it right now, okay? Just admit it. Spooning! Woohoo! Spooning is awesome because, again, you can use a variety of materials and you can use a variety of spoons, okay? So here, what do I have? I have first traditional beans, grains. Again, two identical. Are you proud of me? I got identical bowls this time. Hmm. Gotta work on those pictures. So two identical bowls. Okay. Um, again, you can use, and I introduced you guys to this before, but you guys can use um, pom-poms. You can use gems. You can use, oh, this is a fun one, you guys. Kids love this. It's the holiday time, right? This would be great, right? These little jingle bells. Um, kids love that stuff. Great for hand transfer. Um, tonging would be great, too, which we'll go over in a minute. It's great. So go nuts. Uh, you can use buttons. You can use beads. Okay? So here we go. Oh, wait. Hang on a second before I start the lesson. Lynn has a question. Hi, Lynn. Um, do you start with larger containers before you use the smaller ones? Um, yeah, ideally you do. Um, and containers with the dry pouring, I'm assuming, and, and the pitchers and all of that. I mean, with the pitchers, you just want something that the, that's the child can, can grasp. So you wouldn't want a huge pitcher. Like the pitcher that I just used to demonstrate the pouring left and right and back. This is way too big for the kid. So ideally for wet pouring, this is a nice little pitcher that I got from Montessori Services. Um, but little creamers are perfect for this too, because it's perfect. The kid can really, the child can really grasp onto it uh, easily. In terms of, um, in terms of dry pouring and hand transfer, hand transfer doesn't really matter. Just get something that works with the size of the child. Um, uh, for spooning, I get yes and no. I mean, you don't, like I have these little ones here that I love so much. I got these from Goodwill. So this would be great for an older child who has a bit uh, more refined, fine motor. So let's see if I can find a good spoon. Yeah. Okay. So like an older child would be able to, here to give you an example, I'll put some beans in there. Okay. So this right here, right, for spooning, that's that's way too little for the, the littlest, like for a three-year-old to do, even maybe even a four-year-old, you know? So, but a five-year-old, they could do that, which is great, right? Because then you're extending the practical life to the older children in the classroom, because they can really get bored of practical life once they master things. So anytime you can kind of bring them back, it's great. It's always good to work on those fine motor skills. So again, like a little child is not going to be able to necessarily do that, but an older child can. All right. And again, this is a tiny spoon. So depending on what you're uh, spooning, it, you know, could, could or could not work. So there's, Lynn, I know that was a long answer to your question, but there's no definitive. You just have to kind of work with the child um, and see where they are developmentally. And I mean, if you're like, if, so for example, even if this was, if this was a pouring, here, I'll use these again. If this was a pouring and you use small ones like this, chances are a young kid's gonna pick this up and just, you know, oh, go like that. And wow, that's a control of error. That's also an indication that, that the child's not quite there yet. I think I sacrificed myself here for you guys. I hope that makes sense. I can try to answer it a bit better if you want uh, to get in touch with me, okay? Um, sorry. <laughs> I was a little overzealous with my demonstration there. Okay, so let's go back to spooning. Just your standard introduction to spooning, okay? And so... Voila, you can use a spoon. There's, I, I know this is going to sound silly, you guys, but there are so many interesting spoons to use. <laughs> Saying that out loud really does sound funny. But uh, there are. I mean, you can really integrate a lot of cultural uh, 
aspects to it, right? Um, you can use a little wooden spoon, you can use a measuring spoon, I have this little measuring uh, spoon here, a little tablespoon. Um, you can spoon with, uh, why am I spacing on what this is? Somebody, somebody, anyway. <laughs> You see, can you tell I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting there, huh? Okay. So yeah, have fun. Go nuts with your spoons. All right. Okay. So again, you have a tray, two identical bowls. Um, it's nice to have smooth insides, by the way. The left one is half to three fourths full of objects, and then you have a spoon. Okay. Um, and objects. I'm using beans here super helpful but again you can use a variety of different objects you can use those fun little bells you can use uh you know just go crazy you can use little pebbles if you want um you can use gems etc so go and have fun so first step you identify the materials on the tray this is a bowl this is a bowl this bowl has beans in it this bowl is empty. This is a spoon. Then you lift the spoon with your subdominant hand. So for me, that would be my left. You lift the spoon with your left and you show the child the handle and the bowl of the spoon. This is the handle. This is the bowl. And then place the spoon slowly into your dominant hand. I always like, I know it sounds silly, you guys, but you see how I'm holding this? It's kind of like working my three finger grip. So instead of like, you know, or doing something like that, you're already introducing that three finger grip. In fact, that's one thing I got dinged on in my uh, ding dong, ding, <laughs> dinged on. <laughs> that came out funny. Um, in my final exam because I held the tongs kind of incorrectly. So I'll show you guys that in a second. Okay, so then putting handle, cradle in between thumbs, da 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 okay. Um, and you go, scoop towards yourself. Slowly, slow intentional movements. From one bowl, See that sound, right? So that's your control of error. And these beans are actually very small, so it's gonna be hard. <laughs> that's a really work hard to get all these beans out, but that's a control of error. And just be really intentional, like, oh, oh, almost there, almost there. Oh, a couple more, a couple more beans. Okay, I think it's empty now. It's empty. And then you do the same. Repeat the procedure into the into the other one. You ask the child if he would like to do the work. If he says no, then that's fine. He returns the tray. If he says yes, you stand up, you leave, you let him do the work. Okay? So that was spooning. And again, go nuts. Look at this little baby spoon. All right? Other fun spoons, I have a little scooper, like a little baller. That's kind of a fun one kids like to use. But there's so many different fun little strainer spoons and, and all of that, that, variations and extensions to these activities that are really awesome. Okay, so that was spooning. Um, the next one is tweezing. Okay, so um, I'm going to grab different bowls just because, you know, to make life so interesting for you guys, right? Oh. Okay, so this is an example, Lynn, of, uh, you know, a bigger bowl might be easier. Oh! Hey there, guys. <laughs> so a bigger bowl might be easier uh, to introduce tonging or, uh, to the younger children. Child is maybe ready, but doesn't quite have that fine motor set yet. So here's, a, the, these are actually... If I were to introduce this to a child that um, 
it was interested, but not necessarily, didn't necessarily have the fine motor, fine motor skill yet. I would, let's use these again, and I would use bigger objects, like these wooden chips. Because then they're nice and big, they're easy to grasp so the child can really work on, um, work on that three finger grip, okay? And, yeah, big pom-poms, another great, um, great for the little, little ones. And, you know, if the child wants to use his fingers, just, this is a hand transfer. So just emphasize that three finger grip. Don't, don't let them go, ah, oh, done. So emphasizing one at a time, three finger grip. Really pausing, being slow and intentional. Okay. Let's say you've got, um, you know, someone that's kind of in the middle of the range and just ready to, to work, to take their fine motor skills to the next level. You might use these small pom-poms, for example. And you can use the big tongs so they can, it's kind of the, the next, the four tweezers. Okay, so again, you've gone, you've invited the child to the work, you've gone to the shelf, you've grabbed the tray. You want to identify the materials. You pick up your tongs with the dominant hand, fingers in the middle of one side, thumb in the middle of the end. You demonstrate how to open and close the tongs. Kids love that. Open, close, open, close. You put the tongs down and you ask the child to demonstrate how to open and close the tongs. Pick up the tongs. I totally skipped a part. I can't believe you guys didn't call me out on that. I didn't identify the bowls. You say, this is a bowl. This is a bowl. This bowl has small pom-poms in it. This bowl's empty. And then you introduce the tongs. These are tongs, open and close. Let the child try it out. Um, gently, so this is what you move. Slowly, intentionally, gently, silently, each one. And in this case, since these are pom-poms, just flung me across the room. They're not making any sound, but that's okay. You can point that out. Like, oh, do you hear how quiet that is? And then you move them all over. And then you move them back. And generally, you go one at a time. I'm just kind of going quick here. And then you do the same procedure to move the materials back. Okay. Whoa! So, um, you put the tongs down and you ask the child if he would like to try, if not, return the tray, etc. So, um, this is really, I mean, again, the aims of all of these, right, concentration, focus, coordination, uh, independence, order, right, completing the work cycle, the indirect aims here largely is reading and writing. This is a, you know, it's an indirect aim preparation uh, for writing, right? You see that? So these are tongs, but so you have an older child that's got some rock solid. Um, they're ready to ready to move on to the next level when it comes to their fine motor skills. Here, let's use something different just to make life interesting. To make life so interesting. Okay. So here. I have these adorable, how cute are these? Oh, they're so beautiful. Okay, um, same thing. We introduce something to the tweezers. Open, close, open, close. And this, you can also do uh, sorting, right? Because you notice there's three different colors of roses here. So you could do a sorting. You got a sorting dish. 
let's pretend there's only let's pretend there's only two so you could sort dark light dark light so you can introduce it's a pre-sensorial there so that's kind of fun and exciting isn't it um and let's see you could use Again, it's so fun to get all the different variations going here. Okay. So you can use beads. Now these are trickier. So I chose these because they're kind of slippery. So it adds that little extra challenge for the child who is ready for the work, but maybe the pom-poms just aren't quite hard enough or those flowers, or the object, whatever you're using. So this is kind of cool. These are great little beads you can use for bead stringing in, a, in your next area of the classroom. And they make a cool sound when they hit. So it's kind of neat. You gotta always think about those points of interest with the kids. What are, you know, what's gonna hook them? What's gonna make them interested in doing, interested in doing the, the work, okay? So, Let's see. Guys, we are rocking it. We only have one more lesson in, actually, technically two more lessons within basic exercises here. The next one is basting. And I have, again, kids love basting. Um, and typically, again, Lynn, kind of to your point, with um, an exercise like basting, you'd want to use uh, like a turkey baster, so a nice big baster. I just have, um, I have a small baster. This is one of my tweezing works, by the way. How cute is that? It's a little, you put, you put the, the little eggs here and then you tweeze. It's so cute. I love it. How adorable is that? I know, I have problems. Okay. I'm going to find my, my basting here. My baster. Bear with me, guys. We are going to make this happen. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, you pretty little heads off. here. This one, just just from a science kit, and then I have a little one. It's like a little medicine dropper. <laughs> it's not a baster, is it? It's a medicine dropper. But again, the nice big turkey basters are great uh, for little kids. They can really watch the water go up, and it's a lot of fun for them. Okay. I'm going to use... Pour a little water in there. Okay, so here we are. We've gone to the shelf. We've carried the tray over to the table. Identify the materials. This is a cup. And this is a cup. This cup has water in it. It's blue. This cup is empty. This is a baster. Neck, neck, hole, or bulb, you might want to say. Yeah, bulb, and then you'd say hole for down here. You demonstrate how to squeeze it. Squeeze. Please. You place the baster down and you ask the child if they would like to try the baster. Then you pick up the baster and you demonstrate. I am going to move the water from this glass to this glass. Ooh, did you see those bubbles? 
and you watch, you point out how it's going up. And again, so cool, right? This is pre-science, right? And you basically keep doing this until all the water I won't kill you guys on this, but I'll show you. And then you, and then you move it back. Uh, pretty simple. There's a sponge on the tray as well. Okay. So that was basting. The final exercise in the basic exercise section of the Practical Life Sequence is one of my all-time favorites, the open and close trays. Now here's where you can have a lot of fun, okay? And I always love this because my mom is one of those people that always has like the cutest little pouches and boxes and stuff that she collects um, in her travels. So that keeps it interesting for the kiddos, right? So I like to use, and you don't have to be on a tray here or at a table here. The, most of the practical life works are, are best to do at a table. But um, you can carry this one. In fact, let's move to the floor real quick here. You can just use a mat. Okay. Wow. There's my lion. And my dinosaur lion. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> and my earth. This is the best, by the way. If you guys ever seen this cross section, it's awesome. Kids love it. Okay, so watch me. Let's see if I can get a good angle for you guys. So the open and close tray is uh, can be a tray, um, but I like to use a basket. And I like to create an element of surprise. So, um, sorry guys, thanks for bearing with me here. Um, I like to use an element of surprise for the kids, right? Because that's a total hook. And honestly, kids just love the open and close tray or basket, regardless, right? I don't, I don't know why, but they do. So, but I love this basket here because it has this opening and it's a total... And kids just love it. They're like, what's in there? What's in there? And so when I introduce this, I'm like, ooh, hmm, what do we have in there? Hmm. So once you once you do that and get them really excited, you can introduce each, and, and you're gonna be on that here, okay? You can introduce each each object. This is so again, I got this at um a Goodwill, but how great is it? It has a top, it has a container. So you, you put each down, moving left to right, right, and you show, you demonstrate each one. There's so many cool, I know you guys, this is crazy, but I'm such a loser, but I'm proud of it. I'm a Montessori nerd. Let's unite. Um, there's so many cool containers out there, you just don't realize it because you've never really thought about it. Look at this, glasses. Altoids case. Right, so you're putting these on the mat left to right. You can see how I'm kind of, I don't have a mat here with me, but I'm moving them, I'm putting them left to right. And look, look this is headphones. This is great. I mean, just move slowly and intentionally and let them know how to open each one of these. Little snap. And emphasize the snap. This is a Velcro, cool little Velcro one. This is a cincher. Spice jar. This is fun. All right, so all of these are open and closed. Open and closed, they're really refining the uh, fine motor skill. And kids love it. They love open and closed. I don't, it's funny. So yeah, introduce them to each one, and then you place them back into the basket, moving intentionally left to right, top to bottom, you ask the child if he would like a turn, and then if he doesn't, return the tray to the shelf, and if he does, you're golden. You let him do it, and you get up, and you go on your merry way. 
So my friends, this was a lot to take in, I'm realizing. And it's not amazing. It's just one area of the Montessori classroom and it's one area within that piece of the classroom. There's a lot going on in the Montessori classroom. So this was practical life, um, the very first part of the practical life sequence, which is basic exercises, okay? So I have all this stuff on my blog. I'll leave links to all these lessons. Um, and then I'll save this video as well, upload it to YouTube, etc. And before you guys go, I have a fun little opt-in for you. Um, I created this over the weekend, or maybe last week. I can't remember when I created it, but um, I made this. This is your little practical life workbook. Okay, so this little workbook is a sequence of lessons, and it, it, it's going to include variations and extensions. I haven't added those yet, and also ideas for materials. So all that blabbing I did about pom-poms and shells and all that, I'm going to put that all in one document for you. And then kind of gives you a little test, right? Direct aims of practical life generally, indirect aims generally. Um, it asks you to explain why practical life is the, is the first um, place that a child starts. And then um, key aspects to the shelves. And once you've mastered a lesson, which lesson you move on to. And then it includes the sequence. And this, by the way, I, you get the soft copy, so there's actually live links that go directly to the lesson. So, uh, let's see, anyone have any questions? So anyway, I'm gonna add, uh, sorry, I didn't finish my thought. Can you guys tell them? I need some lunch. Anyway, um, I'm gonna leave a, a link to this so you guys can download this um, and subscribe to my mailing list and it's all yours. Um, let's see, Jennifer asks, when do you think you will have the online course? Well, um, I'm working on it currently. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best timing. I have one other online curse course happening in a couple weeks called The Journey to Simple. And uh, that's kind of my baby. That's like my, my passion. And obviously Montessori is my passion too. And to be quite honest with you, I have all the content. I just need to put it into a course. So Jennifer, tell me this, why, why do you ask? Like, what's the, uh, timing? What's, what's the timing? So you're, you're my audience. So what's the timing, Jennifer, that would work, uh, for you? Like before the school year, um, so like August or the beginning of the school year, because what I was also thinking, which is this, it's kind of a live, I say a live workshop, but I basically record um, various lessons and give you homework and prompts and workbooks and all that good stuff. But we, we work on it together. So, um, you can do it in real life in real time. Right. So I just introduced all these basic exercises. So now you have the, um, you have the tools that you need to, to practice that and to do it in the classroom, um, or at home. Um, and especially, it's interesting, if you're, if you're a teacher who's just interested in bringing these ideas into your classroom, this is perfect for you too. Um, and also assistants. I've noticed in, in some Montessori classrooms, not um, all the assistants are trained. So any way that you can give, um, you know, hand them with a bit more knowledge uh, that they can put in their back pocket um, would be great. Okay, Jennifer says, before the school year, next year, you... We'll have a kindergarten and preschool and a one-year-old to a homeschool. Whoa! That's amazing, Jennifer. Out of control. Well, I will do my best, and I also will just shoot across, shoot, shoot you guys a bunch of, um, a bunch of resources as well. My connection is weak. Okay, good. You guys are... Oh, sorry about that, guys. Facebook's not loving me right now, so I'm going to take that as a, as a cue that I need to go, all right? Thanks for joining me. I know it was a lot to take in. Okay, I'm just going to say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a great day.